You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, the OG. The triple OG. Emery Jones. Oh, hey, Emery. OG. What's up, Em? It's <laughs> real triple. What's up, sir? I like that. Nah, nah. Good, man. Bless. Nah, first of all, man, for the people who don't know, they probably heard your name. But, like, who they wonder, who is Emory Jones? Who is Emory Jones? Man, humble soul. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. Just uh, uh, a humble soul that just happened to have a, a great best friend and brother named Jay-Z as a part of the story. <laughs> you know? So, you know, that, that helps out the process, you know? Now, now you one of Jay-Z's day, day ones. Like, one of the original circle crew members, brothers. 30 years. 30 years. Mm -hmm. How'd y'all first connect? Streets, man. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a connection through a mutual friend that them two grew up together on the same floor that came together. Just so happened that mutual friend ain't around no more. Mm -hmm. and we still here. Mm. Now, what's your position within Rock Nation? Just to explain to everybody what it is that you do. I'm the Pearl guy. Mm -hmm. So anything you see with this paper plane, that's my okay. baby. That's my, my baby right now. Were you always in the fashion? Always. <laughs> it was. It, it's so funny. Uh, when I was young, Jay used to always say, "Yo, you got to go to shopping rehab." Cause I used to just shop too much. Shop all the time. <laughs> all the time. You know what I'm talking about. But, but you're from about, what? Baltimore, right? Yeah, I'm so, outside of Baltimore. So it was heavily Tim's back then. Yeah, but heavily that, New Balance. Yes, gray but, sweats. Oh, oh Emery still but, New Balance but, though. But, but, but the funny thing, the, out. The, phone, the funny thing about <laughs> it though was, I used to couldn't wait to come to New York because it was like first day of school. I'm like. I'm coming back with the green suede ballets with gum bottoms. <laughs> right, they, like, right. they like, what is he doing? I'm like, that was the beauty of New York back then. Yeah, that know, was the thing about Baltimore, D.C. When I went to Hampton, you always knew who was from Baltimore and D.C. because of their outfit and the clothes that they wore. Because girls wore Tim's too. The girls wore mm -hmm. Tim's and sweats as well. Yeah. Now, now, how did you hook up with Puma? Um, I'd say about five years ago. Um, they brought my custom, I had a custom sneaker company mm -hmm. that they brought in to do some custom work. And, um, they didn't know that I owned the company. Mm. So they got in touch with our partners. So I'm sitting in the room with, um, we're in the office and it was a Meek Mills meeting. It was the first time Meek really had sat down with the creative side. Oh, he had a deal. So I came in with Meek, but my custom partners was across the other side of the room. So uh, they start asking questions and I'm asking the question. Everybody in the room starts saying, like, who's this guy? Right? And then my, mm -hmm. my partners is texting me as a meeting like, yo, the, the the designer guy hating on us, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Cause they didn't know and I was like, don't worry about it, right? So at the end of the meeting, they was like, well, you know, let me get your number, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, they're my partners, right? He was like, really? So it just started from there. You wow. know? Now, now, the Puma, a lot of people got their own sneaker, right, Emery? No, you, a, lot, you, a lot of people don't have their yeah, own sneaker. Yeah, you really got your own sneaker. They say they got their own sneaker. It got his name on it, his face on the box. Yeah. He got his name on the inside. You got a couple of different pairs. I ain't got those. I mean, well, I, I don't have any because they didn't make women's this time. I'm a, I'm too bad, too sad. <laughs> I'm gonna get you both, but today I made it. You know, I gave. You know, I wanted to come to show one. One is an OG. One is an update. Well, you well, know? well, break it down the difference between having your own sneaker and just, I guess, endorsing one. I mean, the beautiful thing for me was it wasn't even about the money, even though, you know, the money gonna come. It was about, you know showing guys that's still in the in the mix of where I come from that you can do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when they see me with a sneaker, it's different because I ain't no athlete. I ain't rapped. I ain't did nothing. But I love to inspire others. So they like, you know what? Even if I'm not going to take that positive step yet, when I wake up and say I am, I can. And that's what it was more about for me. You, you have such a very inspiring story because you, you was doing serious fat time at one point, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did 12. You did 12? But, you know, I, I look at the 12 as no different than somebody did a year, two years, or five years because I feel like life can change overnight, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's up to you how you utilize the time that you're gone. Some people come home better. Some people turn it into a positive. From day one, you know, think about it. I went in in the beginning of the Hard Not Life tour. Mm. Wow. So that's crazy. we ready to make the transition of seeing the fruits of the labor. So to me, you know, I've been around people that, you know, had friends that was winning and as soon as we be in the TV room and they see them, they get sick. Cause you know, they can't, they can't adjust to 
you being away and you seeing all this going. To me, I smiled every day. Yeah. I looked at it as I got opportunities coming up. Mm. Now you've gotten a lot more comfortable with speaking and being in front of a camera because I remember at first you wasn't trying to. Be I still straight. don't. I still don't. I still don't. But I realize people say it's business. Mm -hmm. So you know when when you know I got a product that I think is bigger than it's the message of this product. I just wanted to speak to everybody that you know it's time to just come out my my shell. A little right. Bit, what was the know? toughest thing when you got home? Was it was it the fact that your man, your best friend, was in his prime when you was down? Is it you? You, you, you have a child at the time. You miss yeah. all of that. And I, you know, is it what, what was the toughest thing for you to? The toughest. To the toughest part is the the family side. Mm. You know, what I mean, being away. Even though me and my kids have a great relationship, you still got a strain. Think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not there. So what I'm taking care of financially, and you know, we seeing each other. You're not there. Right. You know, what I mean, you're not there to walk them to school or be there when that. You know, to have a daughter that you know becomes a woman, you know, I missed all that. So that was a tough part because even though they didn't say they was mad, I know they had some 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 feeling inside. And I always tell them like, I'd rather for you tell me how you feel and then we figure it out from there. Right. One, one of the things I admire the most about the Rock Nation team, man, it's like all of y'all know how to play your position. You, Ty Ty, Beha. Like how hard is it to not get caught up in the limelight, in the fame of just being a I rock mean, boy? I mean the the reality is we all men. So, mm -hmm. you know, we all comfortable in our skin. Mm -hmm. So you you as good as your lead, and I feel like we got the best lead, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what helps him be a great leader is having great team players, right? You know, I'm a boss, Juan a boss, Tata a boss, Jay Brown a boss, so we cool with that. Mm -hmm. But we also know that, you know, Jay make things tick. Yeah. So, Did you ever think it would come to the day that Jim Jones would be doing a deal with Rock Nation? I mean, why wouldn't I? I mean, but really, when you think about it, when you grow up as men, you know, we can agree to disagree. But a lot of times, stuff that happens is really obsolete mm -hmm. when you look at it. It's so much it's so much other things that be going on that we should be worrying about than, you know, the back and forth bickering. Right. Yeah, like I even saw Biggs post on the Instagram. He posted the, the old double XL cover. And he was like, yo, you ain't even realize that was me in the driver's seat. And Emery in the passenger seat, and I'm like, damn! You remember when Jay was standing up with no, with, with, with no just socks, the socks on, socks on. Yeah. and and Beanie and Bleak? I'm like, wow! It's so funny because you know me and Biggs, we we talk every day, we neighbors, and we got a lot of business things going on, and it's like, you know, his mindset is just the same way. You know, people look at, you know, him coming home and going through what he been through, but then, you know, Biggs is a good dude. I don't I don't think situations dictate who you are as a person, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I went to jail, I did time, but that didn't mean I was a bad person. Right. Mm -hmm. I just made some bad decisions. Okay. You know? I see Biggs back hustling. I love to see Biggs back hustling. Oh, man, I see him out it's, there. A, it's the best thing, right? Every time, yeah, every city I'm in and he, and he got a pop-up shop, he's doing something, I try to go and support and, and show love. It's man. the best thing. I mean, because, you know, Biggs got a pure heart. Mm -hmm. He's a, you know, we could take away from what happened and what didn't. He's a good dude. Right. You know, at the end of the day, you know, good dude's gonna win. Mm -hmm. And you were supposed to do longer time, but it, the urban legend was Jay wrote a letter to the judge or something like that? I mean, that's what they say. You know, he did write a letter, but, you know, the laws changed. And, and just so happened I got back on the crack law when just so happened that my brother was in a position to write a letter mm. that helped me. So, you know, I count all them blessings. And that that, that's, that proves that you got great character because nobody going to co-sign for someone to get out and then... I mean, I mean think about it. 12 years, I could have changed a lot. So... I might not have been the same person I went in, but they know my they know me as mm -hmm. a man. They know my my character, where my heart is. So, you know, they they know and then then the whole time when I was gone, we talked all the time and they used to be like, Man, why are you so positive? <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. call more. They like, man, I only get three hundred minutes, man. I can't waste <laughs> I can't wait I can't I can't waste three hundred minutes, you know, right. talking fly on the phone, you know what I mean? So when we did talk, it was like everybody used to be like, he's so upbeat. And, and, and I never, one of the main things I told all of them, from Jay, Dane, Biggs, all of them, that what we did for each other was from the heart. Mm -hmm. You don't owe me nothing. So don't think because y'all winning and it's turnover that I'm sitting here like you owe me anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was something that I emphasized every time I called. How did you switch your mindset from the streets? Cause we just read a story about the guy who went in for 25 years for for hustling, and then 
came home, Obama pardoned him. He went right back to hustling. Like, I mean, next day, like, I after doing 25. I mean, I mean, that was, you know, sometimes that's the that's what the world made up, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? Myself, you know, it's, it's like the project. It's called Bet on Yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I was betting on myself from day one because I was betting on myself before I left. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, I had a conspiracy from 98 to 96, mm -hmm. and they picked me up in 98. So that means I had a conspiracy that started when I was 16 years old. Mm. How many 16 year olds know what they really doing? Right. Right? The thing about me is I knew what I was doing. You know what I mean? I knew that once you, you know, touch the streets, it was it was two options. You know, the third option is small. Not everybody survived it. But it was death or jail, right? I I caught the ladder. You know, right. went and did what I did and looked at it as like that chapter is behind me now because I got a big book I wrote. It's just, that was just a chapter. It right. was a chapter in this big book that I'm ready to show the world. What, what, what's the bet on yourself slogan mean for people who not who not in the street? Well, the, the, the bet on yourself slogan is more or less, you know, everybody know me from Vegas Jones from, from IG. And um, I got that name back when we did Can I Live? Mm -hmm. And um, we was in Vegas for the Tyson fight, no record deals, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And we was running around there like we own Vegas. <laughs> Meet me at story. the crap table, the one that starts the G. It was real story. You know, they was drinking Moet, we was drinking Cristal. It was everybody. Like it was it was one of them things. And they gave me that nickname that day and they was like, yo, you Vegas Jones. So, you know, over the years when I came out and finally my guy Upscale Vando got me to get on IG. Finally, he was like, every day he used to come in all, yo, you gotta get on IG. Nah, I don't want to. <laughs> and then I was like, if I do it, it got to be from a positive standpoint. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started doing the word of the days. But the word of the days didn't come from now. It came from in the feds. Mm -hmm. We started, I was one of the first crews that started with the email system. So that means you had 30 contacts on your email, so it was cheaper than the phone. You get more time. And um, my 30 contacts, I would send them a word of the day every day. So when we locked down, kept call for a couple of days, and I told people, everybody, what's wrong? Something wrong? Because they was looking for word that of word of the day. day. Right, right. Like, think about it. For me being in and I'm giving them that life, mm -hmm. they like, wow. So when I came home, I had a friend, we called him DJ Randy P, the positive one. He was making mixtapes in 82 in Merle, mm. right? He, he found God and got rid of all his equipment. But when I came home, he said, I got a gift for you. He gave me every word of the day I ever sent him. Wow. Wow. With the gift, with the date, everything. So I started from that. Mm. And well, then it kept in. So the bet on yourself came because Puma was like, we want to do a project. You done did so much for us from the meek, mm -hmm. from, you know, convincing Rihanna that Puma made sense to, you know, um, even with Solange. They was chasing somebody else, and I was like, do Solange. Because Solange is culture, mm -hmm. right? Um, down to Puma Life. I created the hashtag Puma Life. Mm -hmm. And um, they was like, we want to use the Vegas Jones. I'm like, nah, I'm not mm -hmm. Vegas Jones. And then I thought about it. I said, you know what? Vegas came from all the wrong reasons. So I'm going to flip the whole casino, Vegas, betting to bet on yourself. Mm. I, I wonder now, what do you appreciate more? Do you appreciate the times in Vegas now more or back then? Like, which was more fun for back you? Then. Back then? Back then. <laughs> Back then. Vegas was Vegas, man. But the thing about Vegas is people don't realize it don't matter how much money you got. If you're spending money, they're going to treat you like a king. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. because you walk in there a millionaire and you, you're not spending no money, they don't care. But if you're spending money, they're going to treat you like how you need to be treated. Mm -hmm. And it was just a fun thing. I mean, think about it. Just from that session. <laughs> when they, they gave have me, money. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, when I, that mm -hmm. session, when they gave me that name, the reason why I acted up as soon as we got off the plane, I hit him for 20000 mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is a free trip. There you go. It's a free trip, so I'm I'm going to leave this all here mm -hmm. and have a good time. What, what, what does Baltimore mean to you, other yeah. than home? I mean, you know, the whole city, the whole state of Maryland is, is, is different for me. It means so much because me growing up in the middle, like being from the shore but having family in Baltimore and D.C., so imagine that, right? Family in both, dealing with both, then also coming to New York since I was 14. Mm -hmm. So now I get a chance to have, like being a pot of gumbo, 
mm-hmm. and learn everything, right? But it's, it's the heart of the city means so much to me because you only see the violence, right? They don't tell you that beyond all that violence, it gotta be a lot of love. Because when your mom getting high, your mom did, and blah, but your grandmom is the one bringing us over to make sure we eat. Mm-hmm. They don't show that side. Mm-hmm. That's the side that keeps everybody going in Baltimore. They right. need to show that more. Because yes, the, the violence there and the drugs and everything, but that inner circle, we had to love something to get by. Because if not, it'd be completely wild, wild west. You do so much for the city, it seems like. I mean, I try. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the blessings of uh, a company called Shoe City, you know, they own 40 stores and um, family owned for 69 years. And I had offers from a bunch of stores, but they really give back to the community first. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know what, this is where I want to, This I don't have a problem doing some business with them. Because before they think about making a buck, they give back. That's dope. They really give back. Like when the riots was happening mm-hmm. and they was burning down people's stores, they were standing out in front of Shoe City because they so good to the community. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so when that happened, it's like, let me take this platform and use that to give back. Because, you know, my thing is, even when I was in, I started a program my last three years called Bad Choices, Harsh Realities. So they used to give me a furlough once a month to go in Orange County, because I was upstate in Otisville, mm-hmm. to talk to kids. Like, I'm going to schools and rec mm-hmm. centers and juvenile centers while I'm in talking to kids. So it just kept, you know, kept with me before. Before, growing up, I think I was a hypocrite because I got so many little homeboys that I saved from being in the streets. Mm-hmm but they wanted to be like me. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. You know, they, they grown now with kids, but they tell me how much I meant to them. Like, I got a cousin that was a secret service that I, you know, kept him out the streets, but they all, you know, he he got it, but the other ones wanted to be like me. Mm-hmm. So it was like, Shit, I gotta come and do something better. Right. Yeah, you're showing them the way now? Yes. Absolutely. Me, me and Emery Jones in the caravan. <laughs> Word up. What'd that feel like? Man, listen, it, it was so funny. Um, when 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 Jay did the uh, John Legend song, I was in uh, Ashland, Kentucky, and he was like, yo, I wanna do this song. And the first thing I told him, like, we don't need no song to solidify who we are. Mm-hmm. Like, but he was like, nah, I, I wanna do this. You know, and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. But I had to make him understand from the jump, like, no song is gonna solidify who we are. We know who we are. Mm-hmm for each other, you know, and um, he gave it to me over, you know, we always, every blue moon, that's him for you, he just pop out the blue sky, I wanna start rapping for you. And then um, he gave it to me and I was like, fuck, you know, I'm in jail, excuse my French, but it was like tear jerk, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because he wanted to show how much he appreciated me, mm-hmm. as the same as I appreciate him. And I was like, you know what, that's his craft, let him do what he do. So when I finally got to Otisville was funny, cause you know how you be in and everybody don't know who you are when you walk through the door. Cause me, I never used to get haircuts or nothing. It was like, mm-hmm. cause you know people judge you by your look. Mm-hmm. So I used to personally not do that type of stuff. And um, when I first walked on the camp, you could tell all my so-called brothers is looking at me like, oh, he he, he fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, they already judge you, yeah. right? So when they judge you, it's like, okay, cool. And then you know. Big homie pop up. Nah, not even that. Okay. By the time the word then got around, they like, oh, sh-. you know, then they come back and I laugh because I'm like, you know you showed your true colors already, mm. right? So, you know, it was it was there when I heard the song because it was like a a, a guard because I was in a camp then mm-hmm. and it was real loose and comfortable and um, the guards used to always try to befriend me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hold up, this ain't a good look. Mm-hmm. Even though, you know, not all guards are, you know, bad people that got a job, right? right. And uh, one day, one of them pulled me in the um, office and played the song for me, or for mixtape, off of, I think it was a case late mixtape or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. So to me, that got me through that last three years or two years, I was like, I'm good now, you know? <laughs> I can ride this out now, uh-huh. you know? So it, it, I think <clears throat> that's the beautiful thing of the music. Jay, his music got me through. I think that's why I'm still stuck. It's gotta be different for you to listen to it though. Cause you lived a lot of it. 
it, it makes it better for me because mm. I know it and I understand it. You know, I think sometimes now people are just catching up to certain things he said years ago because you really don't, you really can't, you really can't fathom that this is all real. Right. All right. You really can't fathom. I mean, you know, that's the world we live in. It. We live with so much, uh, what is it, alternative facts. Alternative <laughs> facts, right. You know what I mean? That you you really don't believe that this is real. Do you ever, like, I always want, like, you walk around the Rock Nation building and be like, damn, we got our own building? Thinking I, about where y'all come from? I, I do, but I think, me personally, when we, well, you know, and we got a lot of big things going on, so we hitting a lot of home runs. For me, I try to stay grounded. Mm. I always stay grounded because I feel like, you know, we got to keep getting on base. And if I get, if we get more people on base, we gonna we gonna win more games than you hitting home runs, right? Gotcha. So, to me, that's my job to stay grounded. Mm -hmm. It's my job to, you know, make sure we're still connected to what got us to the 39th floor. And I and I take pride in that. That's why, you know, people give me, I give my email and they be like, you really gonna email me back? And I'm like, look at my phone. I don't have no missing a thousand emails. Oops. I don't, I don't, I take pride in that. Uh. I take pride because I know, you know, answering somebody's emails or just having that quick conversation, I know what that means to them. Because nobody really gave us nothing. We had to learn by default. You know what I mean? To, to learn that, you know, that process. And to be, I think that's how we run our, I think that's how we run and go towards our whole company. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, people talk about the titles and all that. I think we, we're here to buck the system. Now, I mean, I, I think what you said is amazing. I mean, I, I, I ran into you in Brooklyn and you were talking to, to, to some real estate people mm -hmm. and, and basically telling them, you know, you have a lot more than, than, than what you think. And, and I think that's something, and I even said that day, the one thing about our community is a lot of times we don't teach each other. And we got to learn by default. And in other communities, they teach. They teach you. Yeah. They, they, you know, it's it's from family, from family, from family. And and that's what I respect when I seen you do that. And I see you do it all over the Instagram. You teaching them young kids. You know what I mean? To to not necessarily go through the same pitfalls you did and how to get around certain things. And that's that's the real shit. Yeah, cause I don't I don't want to talk old world stories. Mm -hmm. I feel like my story no different than anybody else's story. It's just I got Jay Z, mm -hmm. right? Which is a blessing. And even me let's being be in clear, mm -hmm. it's a blessing, but it's no different, you know, because we all got issues. We all got Absolutely. people that have been through it, you know? So, you know, I, I feel like since I got a voice, I got to use it in a way that makes sense. But them kids in the hood respect it coming from you more because you lived it, though. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes, and, they, and, and I lived it, and when they meet me, they see how grounded I am. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the part that really makes them be like, I mess with you. Cause once they get a chance to meet me and feel my energy mm -hmm. and understand who I am personally, they like, oh, you you different. I'm like, nah, I'm not different. I'm just, you know, I just feel like my mama taught me right, you know? I was raised by a woman, right. you know what I mean? So you know what that means. <laughs> and it's always exciting for people. Like, I go places in Brooklyn all the time, and they'll be like, oh, Emery was just here. Mm -hmm. Emery came through yesterday, and I think that's important for people to still see you you know, out and about and everything. I'm yeah. like, damn, Emory would just be in Brooklyn like that at these spots I, mean, I be at? I mean, I pop up on the train. Uh -huh. It's New York I City. I take the train too. <laughs> New York City, they be like, yo, where you just come from? I'm like, I just got off the train, man. It's like. It's way quicker. Well, it's way quicker, I'm like. That's what I be trying to tell these guys. <laughs> nah, like, Emory will pop on the train. I've seen Emory pop out of yeah, Phantom like, too, though. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I like nice things too. I ain't saying I got a Phantom, but I like nice yeah. things, you know? But, uh. You know, I like to also, I think the train in New York is the best thing because yes. I get the people watch. Mm, I right. get to see what's going on. You can't, we can't be in tune with culture if you ain't around it. That's real. I agree with that. It's like, you can't, you know, how am I going to tell you about fashion or what's popping if I ain't around it? Right. If I don't see it, if I don't touch it, I'm like, I'm going to tell you about the kids in Brooklyn that don't talk to them. I'm going to talk to you about statistics. Nah, go get, that's the problem. Experience is the best teacher. Yeah, I Absolutely. tell people all the time with this, like even with this paper plane, it's like nobody believed in it, right? But I told them, so, is, we not reinventing the wheel. Somebody's gonna do fashion, was doing fashion before us, they're gonna be doing it after us. But the thing is, we giving a message, and, and, and with that message and knowing what you know culture needs and, and what we've been around, it's easy to bring you something that you need. It's bigger than, it's bigger than a hat. That's why from day one I called it a crown, because I want you to feel important when you put it on. 
But that's what we tell people. If you got a Rock Nation hat and it's not blessed by Emery, it's, it's not. It's not really a crown. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just, don't say, don't, don't say that. I need them. I need them go. I need them go to the store and get that though. So and there you have it. Make sure you pick up the Pumas. They can pick this up now. Where um, can they get this at? Well, it's already been released, but on Friday, uh, what's that? The tenth. Yeah. I'm doing uh, mm -hmm. the new um, Foot Locker Puma Lab. Okay. So I'm doing a release and a Q and A. So it's like Times Square. Like, okay. Come on, man. Me, Times Square, Foot Locker. Crazy. It's crazy. Like, think about it, it. It don't seem like you having no problems in the fashion world. Cause you know, like when you, we hear Kanye do his rant about how hard it is to break in, it seems like you just moving. I mean, it's, it, it is hard, but I think, you know, it's two different directions. You know, mm -hmm. he he's he's breaking barriers in in a, in a real mm -hmm. at high end. In, in yeah. a, you know, it's a tight niche. You know what I mean? Think about it. Gucci didn't become Gucci overnight. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like. So just as much as everybody want to criticize him on, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, think about it. They didn't, they didn't win overnight. Right. You know That's what I'm saying? So it's, you know, with them, they just want you to have a little more prestige with it, mm -hmm. being in that world. Myself, I just feel like I'm just here to touch the people. That's all. I just want to be a part of what's going on. I'm blessed. I'm happy to be a part of being able to do this. Hey. All right. That's how I wake up and go towards it. Bet on yourself, man. There you have it. It's the breakfast club. We got, we got we got like 25 minutes of a recorded Emory Jones conversation. That don't happen too often. Not at all. Okay. It's actually 28 minutes. <laughs> 28 minutes. It's going to happen a lot more now. Definitely, He's out yeah. there. He's yes. out here. Definitely. All right. Well, there you have it. It's Emory Jones. It's the breakfast club. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. The breakfast club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.